One means we're on. One means here we're we on. are again. Well, uh, good morning. Uh, I guess it could be morning for just yeah. about everybody, but hello, everybody. I'm Wyoming Marvin. This is Springfield Denny. <laughs> we're we here to give you part two of how to make bowls out of leather. Uh, this morning, we're going to change gears completely. On Wednesday, we wet molded bowl. Uh, this morning, we're going to dry mold, if that's such a term, a mold, uh, a bowl, excuse me, and uh, sew it up. Let me, ah, there you go. Just like magic. Yeah, this deal, instead of getting it wet and actually uh, molding the leather, you just, you cut it so that when you uh, lace it together, it takes It takes shape. the shape of a bowl. Yeah. Uh, really nice. Here's another uh, version. Same uh, same outside, different inside. We'll see both of those as the morning progresses. So the first thing we're going to need is some leather. Uh, the outside of the bowl, I've got some Herman Oak 8-10 ounce bridle leather chestnut colored. I chose that, well I chose, I'll tell you why I chose chestnut in a moment, but I chose that 8 to 10 ounce, that heavyweight leather, because if you make this out of any thinner leather than that, the bowl just isn't substantial enough. It, it'll hold its shape, but you put something in it and it'll droop. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it just not, uh, you, you need some heavyweight leather. Most, not most. A lot of the bowls that I've made of this size and shape, I used uh, eight, ten ounce latigo, heavy leather. Mm -hmm. Those are nice bowls. They're substantial. Not the least expensive leather <laughs> that you can buy, but you can get seconds. You can get these sides of latigo that you can cut around sure. the, the holes in it. And like we said Wednesday, all the brands and, and blemishes and wrinkles you want. Sure. You don't want to avoid those. Uh, for the inside, uh, same rule as, as Wednesday. You can use anything you want that'll glue. How's that? Oil tan, probably not. It has to be thin, but more importantly, it has to be flexible. You have to be able to move. That. This can probably have a little more body than the, than the molded bowls. Indeed. Did, though, can Indeed. It? We're, uh, we, you can, this is, I think about four or five ounce, and you could easily use five, six and fold this up. Uh, I say easily, not as easy as this, but yeah, you sure. could, you could do it. Uh, and, and you could use two, three ounce. You could use thinner leather for the inside. And I have cut using a template, uh, 15 inch circles of those. You can downscale this bowl. This is the largest size I make. Uh, you wind up with a 10 inch bowl, but you can make an eight inch or a six inch. And when I say 10 inch bowl, it's 10 inches, right? Across the yeah, bottom. That's the bottom right? diameter. Bottom yeah. diameter of it. You wind up with a 10 inch bowl. And we've pre-cut those circles. I'm going to take and show you how to do the layout on this. We'll start with the inside. This part involves mathematics, uh -oh. angles. I could make it. Trouble. We can, we can, uh, and and is not. And, and I, I hope that there's uh, that you'll be able to find. Uh, Tony, you can tell me, are the instructions up where people can get them? You know, you we know. talked about me looking at that. Yeah. And you've been in here for a little bit. And I didn't get a chance to look at it. I've been moving oh. around quite a bit and answering <laughs> a lot of questions. One of them is, did I not get the instructions okay. there? But the I will, they I will be there. I'll put it in the description. They will be there. The instructions for laying this out and for sewing the edges together will be there. Thank you, sir. All right. We'll move that cutting board. And I'm going to mark 
And since it's the back side of the leather and I want to be able to see it, I'm going to use a pen to mark this out. Just mark the center. Give myself a nice reference point. This is geometry. This right? is, <laughs> it's going to be genuine, shortly. Genuine geometry. It's going to be shortly. Then I'll just take a straight edge. Oh, I'm sorry. Step two. I said it's a 10 inch bowl. There's my 10 inch template. You guys, instead of a Center plastic that. template, you can probably just make one out of a heavy paper or, uh, or anything bond, like that. Bondex. Bondex. That good stuff. I use a lot of it. Uh, if you're going to do this a lot, I'd recommend that you uh, get some. I, I use uh, old file folders, those heavy, heavy yeah, manila, manila folders. Yeah, yeah, manila folders make great templates. Yeah. So I've poster, got a poster board. Makes a good template too. The, yeah, heavy. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, durable. I mean, the only when you use paper, every time you use it, you make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, but yeah. that's negligible. You know. Yeah, it it's uh, it might be close enough for this, but I wouldn't get into the habit yeah. of using paper. Yeah. You need something heavier. So I'm just going to go right through my center line. And there we are. And now we need angles. We need 60 degree angles. And I just happen to have a 30, 60, 90 triangle that'll give us a 60 degree angle. Some might call that a right triangle, wouldn't they? They would. Yeah. Call, well, yes, since it's got a 90 degree angle, it is a right triangle. I know what I'm talking about. Something. There's, there's, <laughs> it's a good thing that one of us knows what we're <laughs> talking about. All right, now all I got to do is figure out how to get that. What am I doing now? Ah, there we go. There we go. All right, I've placed the corner of that triangle on my center. And this is 60 degrees. I don't need to draw that line all the way. You'll see why in a second. But I'm going to take, draw one there. Again, center of the triangle. The center of the circle. So I've got, this is a, a hexagon, folks. <laughs> so we need six lines somewhere. We got four of them. We just need two more. Okay. This may not be so critical that you get everything precise and exact and and but like most things in leather work, those errors compound themselves. If you start to get sloppy, it might be all right the first time, but then the next time those errors multiply yeah. themselves, and you'll wish you hadn't done that. Well, I think the main point that, that everybody needs to realize is you just need six equal distant lines. You just need there. six equal distant lines. Thank yeah. you. So, so you, can, you can just jimmy it back and forth until you get six lines that are the same distance right, apart. Right. And we'll do the same thing on the back side of our piece of bridal leather. I still there. Yeah, I'm still centered on there. Let's see if we can get a good center dot going there. Draw our ten inch circle on the inside. Now, if right. what if you wanted to to make a longer sides, could you make like an eight inch? You could. Center? If you want a deeper bowl, a deeper bowl. Surely yes. you could. Surely you could. You might have to change the little wedges that we're taking out. You might have to compensate for that. But you could uh, use a, a piece of heavy paper poster board and make you one. See how it folds up and glues without using leather up to do that uh, for sure. Uh, pick a line, any line. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll do the same with this one. Get that point on the center. And draw these out. Got 
gosh, oh, you got to be smarter. Oh, you got to be a smarter than the triangle, Denny, See? and I guess I'm not. Well, but it's, it's easy to confuse yourself. <laughs> I, I don't want a 30-degree angle in there. It is on the back side of the leather, and I mess it up. <laughs> Nobody will know. But it's, it's um, since I'm doing this in public, I'd like to do it right one time anyway. Uh, okay. So now we've got those drawn. Just disregard the fact that I made that one long. It makes no difference. What matters is these short lines on the outside. I'm going to bend this, the legs of this bowl up to form it. To do that, I'm going to have to take little wedges off of each of this line so that the bowl will move up and not beat up against itself. You'll see in the instructions. They are on there now. All right, good man. Thank you. Yours are on there. Mine are hiding back here. Uh, yeah, they're an inch and a quarter. We need to take, excuse me, an inch and a quarter slice out of this. This is one way to do it, okay? I measured five eighths. Five eighths and five eighths it is, is one in and a quarter. quarter. Figured that out all by myself, I did. Or I asked, how did how did you come up with with the inch and a quarter? The pattern I got this from. And thank you for reminding me. This I found this project. I didn't I didn't invent this. Thing. Uh in a book called How to Make Things Out of Leather. All right, fair enough title. Dated 1973. <laughs> Book's out of print. Sorry about that. But it was a, uh, a fruit bowl. Project to make a fruit bowl. And it actually had a pedestal underneath it. So you could put your apples and oranges and, and, uh, or wooden fruit, whatever, in it. And I thought, well, I don't need that pedestal, but I can make a bowl out of it. In the book, it had all these angles and those measurements oh, laid see. out. When I downsized the bowl to go to eight or six inch, then I had to do a little calculating. But nobody was watching me. I had all, you got all, all the time you need. I, I figured it out. The easiest way to do this is just to take a set of dividers. Set it on five-eighths of an inch. Okay, let's try it this way. All right, I got five-eighths inch. I can put one leg on my center line and mark it. Instead of having to hold that little six-inch rule up there every time. Tony, can they see those marks? I don't know how good their uh, eyes are. Oh. <laughs> I can see them you when I'm looking. Them. I can only right. speak for myself. I can see him. Hey, we had a question. Dean asked if you were related to Nick Nolte. Nick, Uncle Nick? No, <laughs> Uncle I'm Nick. sorry. No, no, I not that I not that I know of. Same Dean. spelling. It, same spelling. Uh, uh, I, I'm trying to be diplomatic here, but one of us has been wrote hard and put up with. I just <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to leave it at that. You can choose which one it is. <laughs> I'm just going to check this to make sure that I'm. I've got an inch and a quarter, and look at that. Right on Dog on. So I'll just go through here. And by the way, somebody's out there going, where did he get that miniature set of dividers? <laughs> we know all about that. Were you Do watching the video when? Oh, somebody commented on your little yeah. Starrett's. Yeah, little Starrett dividers. Guess who made these? Starrett. Starrett. <laughs> now these, let's see. Let me, there you go. Speaking of being rode hard, there used to be a little knob up here that mm -hmm. you could twirl around, and there used to be a little button or cap or something on this end to keep the screw from coming mm -hmm. off. Okay. They're, they're gone. <laughs> they're gone. No they're one gone. Knows where. The legs, let's see if I can do this. The legs don't exactly come together 
right? There's a sixteenth of an inch gap between the legs. I'm sorry, when you're as old as these are, your legs have a gap. In. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I can't help you get, that. You get bow legged when you're that age. But what I love about them is they fit my hand. Yeah, I have longer dividers, and they work just fine. But the longer the divider, the more let me see here wiggle you get. In there, the more play you get, and these guys got no play in them. And best of all, that little bearing nut, bearing washer right there, is metal as God meant it to be. Yeah, not plastic. Not plastic. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I've just changed the setting on these, but that's th those are my favorite dividers. They're my friend. We've been through a lot. Uh, of eighths of an inch. Okay. Uh, let me just tell you that they still make, I think this is called a three inch yes, divider. We bought, make a three inch mine circle. Mine got broken accidentally here. In well, you assume that they were the same size <laughs> as that. Only in, yours have a flat leg, mine have a round leg. Ah, okay. But they got broken in the. Conveniently Tony, put Tony, back on your on your yeah, desk, bro. Yeah, but Tony searched the internet and, and found them. And found the Starrett company, and uh, they ordered me a new set. We can't. You they like enough to. They get, like you. Yes, a lot. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that Starrett yes. likes its dividers. Yes, a lot. Yes, yeah. But and they don't make enough to be upset. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I got to try to keep them happy. All right. <laughs> So now we've got these marked. Let's cut some wedges out. And to do that, I'm going to switch to another knife on you all. Uh, you call it Japanese style knife, mm -hmm. I guess that's called. Uh, I can oh, leave sorry, it down there. Now, yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. There you go. All right. Uh, like my German trim knife, one of the features of this is it's flat on one side, okay? beveled on another. The theory, and it, and it works in practice, but let me get a piece of scrap. In theory, you can place the flat side of that blade up against your straight edge and just cut flush, okay? Gosh, they were sharp a minute ago. All right. Wow. Is that hundredth of an inch? Gonna make any difference Probably if you use not. the flat or the bevel side? I don't. I don't think so. Uh, they are a lot easier to sharpen because you only have to maintain the bevel on one side. Turn it over, take the burr off, and then polish it up. The only reason that I use not the only reason, but one of the reasons that I use this knife is it's great for making stop cuts. It'll go. Get a straight edge here. So I line up my intersection with the 10 inch circle and my little 5 eighths of an inch mark. I can go down in there and cut that. And you can get right up against And I can get that, right up against that, that starting center. point. Okay. And. Uh, Make sure I'm right up against there again and cut that out. Boy, Denny, that is some thick leather. In any case, let's just quick as a. Have you can. given that knife a shot yet, Denny? I know you've been wanting to use one. It, it's actually a pretty handy device. You can. As you, you know, sky with the silly thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it feels funny in your hand at first because, well, it felt funny to me. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it does, it does cut. It, it's, a, yes, it does. Uh, and it has multiple uses. I very seldom use it, but if I just need to shave a little bit off of there, it'll do it. That's a dandy. It, yeah. it, it is a dandy. And lots of people make them. Uh, 
They're popular in other places than Japan. I did buy this one in Japan because I figured if I was going to get a Japanese knife, I'd get a Japanese Japanese person to make it there for me. There you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. You don't want a Chinese-made Japanese. Knife. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing against our friends in China, but no <laughs> is the answer to that question. I don't. All right. Let's see if we can. Don't want to go off my mark too far here. See if we can get those out of there. If it goes straight down. Oh, come on now, sweetheart. In your instructions, do you have what uh, the wedge that you're cutting out as you size yes. your bowl down? Yes. It's oh, instruction. as it sizes down? Yeah. No. The instructions are just for this 10-inch bowl. Is that a, a mark uh, trade secret? If you no. uh, <laughs> say in, no. instead of the 10-inch, if you were using an 8-inch circle here, couldn't you use the same dimension out here? Let let me, wouldn't that work about the same? Let me look. And I can tell you. And what did we say this? Okay. What was this wedge? Inch and, inch and, inch and a quarter. quarter. Inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter. To do that. To people that don't know what, that's 1.25 <laughs> inches. How many millimeters is that? <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> All right. Now, I don't know if this is. Let me see. That's the notes I made myself in my bad penmanship. No. Uh, I don't know if you, you want to, here, let me, you may try to zoom it in or you want to hold it up there. Let's see. What I need to do, ah, there we go, is get it where people can see it. Okay. This is the one we're doing, 10-inch bowl, inch and a quarter. Eight and a half inch bowl. I don't know why I came up with eight and a half, but that's an inch, inch and, and an eighth. eighth. All right. And for a seven-inch bowl, it's an inch. So so your your wedge will be actually narrower. Narrower. narrow. Hmm. I, I would have thought to, differently. Well... Uh, I'm pretty sure I experimented with yeah, this and, 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 well, it and did it wrong know, the first time. My, my <laughs> yeah. illogical, logical thinking said it should be wider instead of narrower. Mm. Not, that's, wider, why, I, that's why it doesn't pay to think a lot of times. Well, <laughs> that's why it pays to experiment, <laughs> folks. Give it some trial and error. Uh, all right. So we've had a couple other questions. Let me, sure. let, me, let me just knock some questions out about acrylic um, templates, wondering but, if we can cut custom templates for people or could we make a 10 or a 15 inch for somebody? If you would like us to, we can. Uh, what is it, Zachary? Is Holly back there? Uh, yeah. Is it Zachary at Springfield Leather? Or do we need to um, message? I can keep doing this while you are talking. If not, you can, you can email Chad, C-H-A-D, at Springfield Leather, and he will get you pointed in the right direction to get you a custom acrylic template. That would be the best thing. He'll direct it around. But yes, it is Zachary. All right. So people were asking if they could get them. We don't have the circle yeah, templates. You, yeah, have them on hand. It's, I don't think so. Well, and it's tough to... That's a big box to put something in. I guess we could send it in a pizza box. <laughs> but sometimes the mail yeah. or the delivery services, you know, they go tossing your box around. It doesn't take much yeah. for a piece of acrylic to crack. No. Eight, eight inch circle, one thing. Fifteen, another thing entirely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will. Let me finish cutting these before I change the subject. Here. Sorry. No, thank you. Was there any other questions while I'm just cutting wedges here? And I can uh, We talked about most of the conversations just kind of in there. They're answering each other's questions. And ah, well, there you go. Hey, you know, we talked about... Ask each other instead of us. There's a good <laughs> idea. We have, we have Australia with us today. We have... Who's with us from Australia? Uh, is Razor Blade? No, I haven't seen Razor Blades. I think, I think Lil Fear is from... Maybe he was from Australia. Maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, but there was another guy that's on Twitch that's, that's there. Um, Ireland checked in on YouTube. Wonderful. A bunch of stuff from the States, but... 
You're worldwide. I've been to Ireland more than once or twice. Uh, and what, that's a nice country. Seven, eight, nine? What what thickness of... This is eight, ten. Okay. Eight, ten. Uh, let me do a little... Uh, give you a little pitch for Ireland. Ireland is the only... Not the only. I shouldn't insult everybody like that. They have travel commercials for Ireland that say the people are friendly and the country is green. It's the only travel commercial I've ever seen that tells the truth. Really? Yes. The people in Ireland are friendly. And partner, that is a green country. Green country. You folks think it's raining in Springfield. <laughs> you go to Ireland, they know what rain is. Uh, my wife and I went to Ireland and had a wonderful time. Uh, that's high on your list of places you want to go. A lot of people want to go to Paris and London, and those are nice places, mind you. But uh, just for the joy of having a good trip. Terry Price is with us on YouTube from Australia. He chimed in with that. All right. Once you get done cutting that and yep. not your finger, will you tell us what brand it is? We had some people want brand of knife. Your your Japanese knife that you have. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll. Uh, my Japanese is a little rusty, so I'll hold it up so they can <laughs> see the mark on there. I, don't I can count and no. I can count in Japanese. That's about <laughs> it. I. Uh, and I can eat sushi. I can. There you go. That's about the only Japanese I can, things I can do. I can do. smile in Japanese. That's about <laughs> all I can do. All right. Terry said it's 2.30 a.m. there. In Alabama. You know, I should have been telling you this. While I'm doing this, would you take and cut Certainly. those straight lines? Just, just from our... Just from the 10-inch circle, circle to the outside. Okay. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight measured line at all. That's good. Okay. So now we've got our, uh, we're making we're, that camera dizzy. Well, we're watching, we're watching Denny cut right all now. Right. Okay. Let me see what. Not even going to try. <laughs> uh, G, G Sake? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hold it up so yeah. they can see. Yeah, you can probably get uh, it held up pretty high there. All right. Will you switch to four there, Nick? We'll see how high you can. I need to get it up where they can actually yeah, let me see if read it. Ah. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, let me scoot over here a little bit further. Sure. Ah, there you go. Saki. Looks like G Saki to me. Uh, G Saki. There are several. Uh, Places obviously in Japan that make Japanese knives, but that's that's the one I found. All Japan, right, I don't know if this is just recently or not, but it seems like the Japanese are really becoming prominent they in are, the leather world. They are passionate, Very, crazy yes, about leather work. Yes, passionate, they crazy. Are, they are. There are some excellent, excellent leather workers in Japan. I don't know if anyone from Japan is listening, but you people must not have anything else to do. <laughs> you, you Can you get some, that paper down? Amazing thing. <laughs> well, I have seen some beautiful work. So we need to do a little glue up here. All right. Both of us? Okay. Both of glue. us. Right. We're going to use, instead of uh, solvent-based contact cement, we're going to use some Aqualine 315, Rennia's uh contact cement just so we got something different going on is this water based this is water based cement uh doesn't have all those happy vapors to it oh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, it holds really well and uh, it works great for these since we're not going to soak it in water switch to your water based cement and we're going to put that in this uh high end silicone cereal bowl that I bought. Why? Silicone 
because, and I left the glue that's dried in there, because when you're finished, you can just take that and peel it out. Wow. And your yeah. high-end silicone cereal bowl is clean and ready to go. Tom Kilt Cullen was wanting to know if he could eat Cheerios. Uh, he can eat that yeah. out of this one. Out of Cullen. that one, for sure. <laughs> I buy this by the gallon and pour it into these smaller bottles. <laughs> so that's why it's in this bottle instead of the bottle that they, that they sell. Uh, that ought to do us. If it doesn't, I got more. So, have at her. Uh, the whole thing All right. needs to be glued. Well, while you're gluing, I got some questions up there. I'll, okay. I'll ask you. Brenda Moore says she got the pre-cut leather bowls in the live show yesterday, and she can't right. wa wait to get well, them picked up. She's she's local. She's ready to pick them up and uh, start trying them. That's nice. Local, yeah. Come by. Don't have to wait for the Postal Service or you UPS. Know, yesterday visit. afternoon, I don't know if uh, you were prepared for this, but they had you do a class for uh, some of the people, some of the employees. Yes, we had a little and employee boy, session of making bowls. Ten or twelve of them. Some of them didn't bring any their own bowls. Some did, but every one of them was just excited as they could be. Yeah, this we morning, had some fun. This morning they came filing in and said, look at what I did yesterday. <laughs> look how mine dried out. Man, yeah, man. some of them didn't have a, a mixing bowl to use as a mold. But we got the leather cut out, and, and we got it all glued together, and the process explained to them. And, uh, yeah, they got to play in the water and uh, make themselves a bowl. And they looked nice this morning, the ones I yeah. saw. Every one that I snappy saw looked good. Michael asked, he said, could one tool the leather for this style of bowl and have a reasonable expectations that the tooling won't get stretched out? Yes, my friend, is the answer to your question. Tool away. This one's better you, you than could, the other one. Yes, you, not. you are not going to, if you, you'll see here in a very short time that we're going to bend this up. We're folding, not All molding. Right, today. we're folding. So that's going to change the tooling. Mm -hmm. uh, on the inside, this is going to compress the tooling a little bit. So practice and see how it does. But this is a lot well, if more just, amenable to tooling then then on a the wedges that you bowl. got left there on I'll call them your wings the wings on your you on your circle wings there if you just did the tooling on those those that wouldn't really stretch out no because it wouldn't and we're not going to bend the bottom at all if you did the yeah so if you did the bottom, did the bottom on the outside well you wouldn't want to do the outside on the inside surely well you maybe could tool are, some four or five ounce and maybe people are prone to having their bowls flip over all the time well so they need to tool the backside <laughs> yeah i know you are Danny. <laughs> I would I would say uh -huh. if you're going to tool this, make sure it's tooled, dried, and cured before you start to mm -hmm. actually do your construction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Lil Fear asked the Herman Oak piece that you are gluing. That's the flesh side that you are putting the glue on. That is correct. That is correct. I want the the pretty side. The out. pretty side to show. So when you flip your bowl over, it still this when I, when I when I flip. It looks like that's what I meant to do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it uh, hair dryer time? If I, I keep talking, if I keep so. talking, it might just dry out real fast. Let me. Uh, <laughs> let me. Can I set this out? Well, I'm, what I'm going to do here is dump it back in your bowl. Dump it back in the jar, which is the advantage of doing that. And uh, then, yes, if you would set that back out of, I guess I could get over here where people can With see a porcelain it. bowl, you probably wouldn't be able to squeeze it together like that and dump it back well, in there. Well, you know, <laughs> no, no. You could use a crane pitcher. I don't, <laughs> don't underestimate people, but I, I don't think I can squeeze that. Yeah, if you just set that aside for just us, please. Way. All right. And, uh, this is an Algene bottle, and Algene makes real good bottles. But I'm telling you, I got uh, Vaseline, I got petroleum jelly on those threads. <laughs> it's, uh, so don't forget, if you're using adhesive, to put some petroleum jelly on your threads. Uh, here is the, the glue that we're using. If we'll, that ah, is, thank you. 
That is the glue that we are using. Oh, come on. There you go. Aqualem 315 by Rinia. So uh, if you look, if you search on our website, 751-03, should pull it up. In the 8-ounce, I think we have I it in 32 plug this thing in, gallon. Plug it in right. It's, oh, you yeah, got it. it is, plugged in. I got it. Plugged I'm going to get rid of our paper here if that's okay. Okay. You get rid of the paper. Oh, you got the stand. And I got a stand. And you know what we're going to do? We're you gonna, got all this other part of the table. Let me get you. Yeah. Let me get you Jimmy, spread out a little. Yeah. You ain't ah, got to, there we go. You ain't got now to tuck yourself it. into this little bitty corner. Well, I'm just trying to hide. I figure if I get far enough back in. Denny will take over and build it. Nope, Denny's getting ready to sit down. <laughs> we can have this made here. All right, I'll bet you that one's. Yeah, it, that it one's good. Let me just give this one a short yeah, shot. You might have. We well, need to get a longer cord on that. Or I need to move over. No. That's all. One there the, I go. Okay. My Springfield mug out the way, and. Uh, mentioned to me that some people asked if they could contact me if they had a question uh, and yes you can I'm going to hold up my business card here so that you can get my uh, email address off of it and I'm going to see if I am just a little bit smarter than the camera is that do we want it up higher you should be you should be good right there there you go good right there. MC Nolte at Bresnan.net just pause the video, write it, it all said. down, take a screenshot, okay. something. Uh, so we had a guy that would actually contact us, and he lived not far from you over right. in, in Wyoming. And he said, man, I can't find anybody that's doing this like that on the weekend. <laughs> would Marvin invite me over to his yeah, house and well, make if, up some uh, holes? The answer to that question is yes, if you bring the beer. <laughs> okay? All right. Yeah, come so, so now we're going to glue this unit together. And I'm going to do a little preparatory bending before I do that. I'm going to actually bend these legs or arms or whatever you want to call them up. My, yes. Those man, are appendages. These appendages up. Marvin, uh, uh, that's, to be that'll, 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 the yes. Talk here. Uh, you can call them whatever you want. I call them wings. <laughs> what? Wings. That's what I'd forgotten what Tony called them. We're going to bend the wings up, get them loosened up here. Michael wants happy. to know what branded paintbrush you were using. Holy Is cow. It wider it's, than the half inch. No. These it, it's a it's a one inch disposable paintbrush. Uh five dollars and sixty cents for ten of them on Amazon or yeah, something. They call, they call them a chip brush. Yeah, yeah, do they? I think. Is that yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. But yeah. they're just very I, inexpensive. Yeah, I just put disposable one inch paintbrush yeah. in there and that's what they had. They're very inexpensive. And I uh, and if you're gonna use it glue and you don't have the, that's not fat boy what is the name of that ts ts boy ts boy yeah fat boy was the name of an atomic bomb anyway <laughs> ts boy uh glue pot if you don't have one of those uh get you some one inch disposable brushes daryl says she got the leather bowl uh the marvin bowl bowl bag bowl bag, bag. Yep, in the live sale yesterday, and she can't wait to make some Christmas gifts out of them. Now, that, see, that's a good idea, uh, because I promise you, whoever you give those to is not going to get two of them, okay? <laughs> Unless you give them to Somebody them. <laughs> else. She's not going to get one from somebody else, for a fact. All right. This next step is the only critical step in this whole process. If you don't do this right, you're going to be sad. Or maybe you won't be, but your bowl will be sad. So to help ease that tension, I'm going to prepare this so it's more forgiving. 
and I'm going to prepare it with good old parchment paper. The stuff that comes on a roll that you cook with, right? What sticks to parchment paper? Nothing <laughs> sticks to parchment paper. Your pot roast won't stick, and neither will your cement stick to parchment paper. If if your cement is tacked up properly. Oh yeah, if your cement is wet, when you pull that up, you'll get a long string of, yeah. <laughs> of wet cement. Yeah. Uh, so I've got a piece for the bottom, and then I've got a piece for each little wing. It's its own piece of parchment paper. That's an interesting I think this is a step that you can use in, in Anything. other it's type right. of gluing uh, situations. Especially if you're trying to glue something that's big. Yeah. And you're working on this end while this end is stuck. Yeah. <laughs> right? It accidentally just droops down there while you're over here. And you say bad words. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're not on a delay, and I don't have a <laughs> monitoring system for that. So I'm glad you brought the parchment paper. Uh, all right. There are slits that Denny cut in this. That slit has to line up with a wedge. And that's the critical part of this. So I'm going to bend this in half. Let's get this straight up and down. Well, you got your extra long line on there. Would it match with that line that you drew on there? Your center line that you drew, does that go right to the middle of a wedge? It does. It does. Yeah, but it, but it wouldn't. It, it doesn't matter because what I can do. Each one has here, to line up. Each one has each, to line each up. Each way. I'm with you. So I'm going to set that down and get my first one lined up. Then I'm going to go back here and see that one's not lined up. Let's see. Yeah, it's difficult for you to see. So trust me, it wasn't lined up. Yeah, it's now good for I you to be to lean over. Go around here and check these to make sure the slits match. Wow. Okay. See, and that's the reason you use the parchment paper right. to keep it from sticking down. To where keep you it from can, sticking where down where I can pick it up and move it. I can peel this whole thing off, shift it five right. degrees, and do it again. So we can. Peel this back now. Pull that out. Push that down. Now, now it's where it needs to now be. Now it's where it needs to be. <laughs> where it's going to be. I'm going to. I'm not just going to push this down. That'll be flat. I need it to come up. And I need to glue that then so that's raised. Well, golly, you've got a whole bunch of extra material out there. What are you going to do with that? I'm going to trim that off. <laughs> You're going to ask Denny to trim that off? No, I'll, I'll try it myself. Well, that's a good that's uh, a good technique because you're training your leather to stay up. Stay up. If if you don't do that, if you don't bend, pre bend, not pre bend. <laughs> oh, what a uh, if if you don't bend that bridle leather up <laughs> to meet this. When you go to sew the bowl, you're going to bend it up and you're going to get a huge wrinkle mm. right there. You're going to get a huge wrinkle right there. So we're shaping the bowl and we're eliminating that wrinkle. And as you can see, I got lots of slop, extra, not slop. I got lots of extra over here. That's intentional. I'm going to trim that off flush to my bridle. The rule is when you're gluing a liner or anything like that, always make it bigger. Yeah. Always make it bigger. Well, Give and, yourself some extra. And what most people fail to realize is this outside there there is actually less distance around the out or more distance right. around the outside of this of this article than there is on the inside just because of the thickness. Well you can and that's why there's so much extra yeah, on here. Exactly. That's why you need to make that bend before you stick it down. Yes. Well, and you were, when you were folding before we glued it, you could see the, the inside, the right. flush part of it. You folded, can see it You wrinkled. can see it folding. Yeah. But the yeah. outside, it's stretching that outside. Right. Exactly. Tight. Yeah. 
So I'm just going to bring each wing up. Yeah. When you keep doing that, Bring Angela says, I just found out that I'm adding parchment paper to my next Costco <laughs> run. <laughs> Gluing things down is harder than it should be. It is harder but than it should be. This is this is going to fix all of that. And Rob, in our last few steps that we've had, says uh, that tip is worth the price of admission alone. <laughs> the the parchment paper trip? Uh, tip? Either one or fold it up and uh, whichever oh, one. Both yeah. of these are nice little tricks to remember. Yeah. Well, I, all I can tell you is I'm glad that I made the mistakes for you. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, the first time I did this, I just glued them flat and then tried to lift this and said, well, that's homely. And went <laughs> back and did it again. That's all, uh, you, all you holster makers out there, too, that this is the thing that, to, that confounds most of you. You because when you line a holster and then bend that around, when you have a fold-over type holster, you always end up with that big, ugly wrinkle right there in that fold. Because right. you didn't do it like this. Mm -hmm. hmm. And so you can sh see, now we've got a bowl shape going Wonderful. Here. All right. The leather that we use today is not in the description. We will get it in the description. Oh. We had to switch... The um, embossed leather that we could you oh yeah could you re yeah. be able to reuse that parchment paper yes okay I will that's uh, and you're wondering why I threw it away well you got to drive back to Wyoming well it's, it's probably it's, a heavy it's load pretty heavy load. load yeah yeah no that We're hard yeah. on gas let me show you thank you Tony <laughs> this is the parchment paper I took off and you'll notice it's glue free that that's reusable until it plum wears out uh, so you can. Uh, I don't let me frugal. let you dig it out. No, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Made him feel bad. Now. Look at that. You, you can humiliate your me wife in over there. She that's has a big right. smile on her face, she's, just saving she's, her dollar bills. But uh, uh, all right. So now we need to because uh, parchment oh, paper is super expensive. I know. You know what we need to do right now before we get too much further is put my cartouche. Oh, you switched over ahead. Uh on the back of this bowl. I could have done it before I did all this bending, and I probably should have done it, but I kept talking and got carried away. But we can flatten this out enough. You could moisten this leather and get out your cartouche marker? Corner. Anyway. Stamp. Yeah. yeah. And give that a whack. That'll work. There's another way to do it, and the way I'm about to show you is we're going to brand the leather. We're going to brand my cartouche into it. The advantage to using a hot iron, a brand, is that you can do this on any leather. Mm -hmm. Oil tan, chrome tan, <clears throat> old leather, new leather, doesn't matter. You can brand it. It... it uh, Veg tan, pretty easy to put a mark Sure. In. Pretty easy. You could also emboss something in there. But to emboss your cartouche in there, you need an embossing machine. This is my little branding iron. It's cheaper than an embossing machine. <laughs> it it's, uh, takes up less space, too. So what this is, is a standard... Let me get that out way before I burn it up. Standard Weller soldering iron with, and here we go. See if I can do this. He's getting closer and closer. We'll turn that around so it looks in the right direction. With my cartouche made of brass. So I went online and I put branding iron into Google. And you know they didn't have a single thing you might use on a calf. They were all. <laughs> I, th really? I figured. I figured I'd have to sort out all of those. But no. Nope. <laughs> what is? Uh, this is what they had. Uh, there's, a, in other words, there's a variety of co of companies. You tell them what size you want. You tell them. You send them the artwork, and they'll make this out of brass and send it back to you. And they'll thread it so it screws right into your soldering iron. One suggestion that I have for you, and I don't know if my cord is long enough to show it. Let's see. 
Ah, yes, it is. Uh, let me switch. There you go. I can barely get in here. This is a soldering iron control unit. It controls the temperature of this iron. You will find that helpful. If you don't have it, the soldering iron heats up to maximum. Okay? You stick that on your leather and you get smoke and flames come up. That's not what you want. You want to be able to, to have that iron semi-hot. I've got it set just about exactly halfway between the minimum and maximum setting there. And like anything else in leather work, run a sample piece through there, right? Good idea. Practice first. Good idea. Before you go into this thing that you just spent a lot of time making, you want to take and make a sample impression. I held that on there too long. It's a little bit zip. Pull it towards you and go up. A little bit too dark. So I know next time when I do it to just make a quick impression. All right? Don't hold it on there very long. There we go. There, that's, right. that's why I'm practicing. Got a piece of the same leather scrap, and I know now. So I'm going to pick what I think looks like the center of this, flatten it out, Set that iron on there, and there we are. Got it. Very nice. And there we are. And then I'm going to unplug this before we burn ourselves. Uh, Denny, can bridle be stamped or tooled? Not well. Not, Not very well. well. It can be stamped a little bit, but <clears throat> anything that's not a raw vegetable tan leather, you're going to have trouble if, if you actually want to tool it. Well, it Shep, doesn't take the moisture. Shep was talking about that. Uh -huh, thank you for straightening that out. Yeah. The oils I and those things they put in there help it resist moisture a little bit. Exactly. So now we've got that marked. And we're off a little bit on a couple of places, but that won't matter if you're off a little bit, and I'll show you why here in a minute. But right now, we're going to trim. We'll just take a pair of scissors, and we'll go along here. I could do that with a knife, but I can do it. A pair those of shears. Nice scissor. Are those, those Japanese scissors too? Well, yes, those are Japanese scissors too. <laughs> uh, the Japanese are pretty good at uh, making cutting tools, right? Anybody that's uh, never seen a samurai sword knows that they've they've got a few they, thousand years of practice. They know metal making sharp instruments. We were using those shears yesterday, Denny, to cut eight nine with ease. Yeah, it, it's uh. This is eight. This is eight ten, right? Anyway, it just. I see that. Yeah, they do all right. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but it, they can if you want them to. Uh, so let me just speed this up a little bit here. We'll just. Then you, uh, Angela was asking up. if you could you heat up a basket leaf stamp like that and brand it. Uh. Some I I, guess you I could. can't I can't say put yes, it in a torch flame say, or something it depends. like that. You know, a, a lot of the the modern day stamps that you'll buy, especially the less expensive, the entry level type stamps, are made from zinc. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful. Boy, with you zinc melt that because yeah, yeah, when it reaches a certain temperature, it just becomes liquid. Yeah, some of those know. Sergei stamps that he has, he makes his he makes a set out of brass. Yes, and the brass ones, yeah, you'll have trouble <laughs> melting the brass, but. Too. If you tried hard enough, you could. Yeah. But that's just something, you know, <coughs> those, those stamps that are made out of zinc are mm -hmm. fairly inexpensive, so give it a try. If you melt one, buy another one. <laughs> see if I can get a little bit closer there. You no. Know, the biggest part of everything that you're going to do as far as leather work comes from trial and error. Because you can have someone like Marvin here tell you exactly how to do stuff and give you a set of instructions. <laughs> but if you don't try it, you will, uh, he can tell you how to do it, show you how to do it, but you have to learn how to do it yourself. And after all, I had that yes. little book from 1973, mm -hmm. and I still have trouble yeah. doing it. I, they had instructions in sure. there. And I, 
Sure. Uh, I, the, 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 I guess the point that I always try to get across to people is don't be afraid to try it. I mean, what have you got to lose? The cow's dead. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and I know it costs money, but uh, sometimes an education costs you a little bit of money. So. Something yeah. I forgot to do, and we just got that finished, was do a little roller work on this to make sure that this is all... And I can take each wing then and also roll that down. You're going to find that even with that cement on there, there is some separation right here at the bend. Don't worry about it. When you lift this up to sew it together, that separation will disappear. I think we got a piece hanging. I got a triangle hanging. We on. got a piece of triangle. Oh, let's flip it back over this way. What did I? Oh, thank you. What is that doing? I don't know. Just trying to. Hang I can on. teach it a lesson. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll teach it to get in the way. All right. Let me quick. Where did you say your, your branding part of your iron? You just Googled for it. Yes, I uh, to get that brass head, and just coincidentally, the company that makes. Those branding heads will also sell you the temperature control unit and the soldering. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. Just, yeah, just coincidentally. Uh, Mentioning no names, yeah. of course. Uh, it, it's a, it, it's, well, I like it. All right. We got another trim to do here on these edges. The edges are trimmed flat. you hand me one of those cutting boards, please? That might be a good idea to stick that under there. So I'm going to take this straight edge and go from corner to corner. Okay. And then we'll just go through there. Come on, sweetheart. I know you can go through there. And trim that out. You're using the wrong hand. That's the problem. That's the problem. I'm also trying to cut through glue, which isn't the easiest thing in the world to cut through. All right, so we've got those edges squared off. Okay, so let's quick do that. And, uh, Denny? Yes, sir. Let's put this over by you while we're doing that. If you switch uh, three to Denny. All right, the back of that straight edge has been modified. I hope everybody can see that. Looks like it's been hammered. It looks like it's been hammered, but what actually has happened is I have glued stair tread material oh, on there. Nice. They sell rolls of, of, of knobby material that you put on steps so it'll slide off of. Well, I put that on the back of well, just about every straight edge I've got because it grips the leather just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know, a lot of the straight edges that they sell nowadays are backed with a piece of cork. Back with cork. Which works too, but it also holds the, mm -hmm. the straight edge up off of your material a bit, which right. sometimes is detrimental. Which is, which is, this does that also. And so you've got to compensate for that or at least be aware. Another but thing that's I, what it does. Another thing I've done, especially with my big long straight edges, is I've just uh, coated the back of them with contact cement, let it dry. Uh, it makes yeah. a pretty good grip mm -hmm. and easy to uh, refresh. Sure, if it gets sure. I've it had it on there for three or four years. I haven't had to refresh it yet. You don't use it very often. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> what do you? You accusing the man of working without a straight edge? What? No, I'm just picking on him. Oh, okay. I, I'll be bound to get it here before too long. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay, to get back at Tony, he uses it more than I do. <laughs> yeah, well, then he can cut with his round knife and not hold it up against a straight edge and get the sucker just straighter than arrow sometimes. Boy, if I'm not bothering him. He's <laughs> Trying real hard not to cut this whole wing off. That'd be embarrassing. 
have to do that. There isn't any better way I know of to do this. You can't do it from this side, or at least I haven't figured out how to do it from that side. So you just have to push down on these wings. Yeah. But you can just, use any utensil you have to cut it. Sure, you, you can, can use, use any utility a, knife or anything a, yeah, you wanted to, to cut it. Whatever. Right, right. You can use anything you want to cut it. Roller blade. For a fact. Yeah. Uh, probably, yeah. A rotary, they make a rotary, a rotary cutter. With like a two inch wheel. Mm -hmm. It's a thing of beauty. It's also dangerous. But there's one but right behind you. Is that, that, is that, that what you're talking about? Ones? Well, no, that wheel. the big one. No, yeah. that's not the big That's the what? Inch and a, inch yeah. wheel? But it's been wore down. Yeah. I'm, that's, I bought one of those and was happy with it. It'll cut right through eight, nine. It, uh, Rabbit Holer it's a heck of a tool. says they back their straight edges with masking tape. Masking yeah, tape. I would say that'll work. Any, anything that'll just cause a little friction. Between right, and your, masking tape would be yeah. thinner than this stair tread that I put on there. Michael said he uh, searched for the brass heads for branding leather and wood, and he found... There are a handful yes. of them. Too. Yes, there are. Yeah, that's what fun. you were saying. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry that I, I've had this so long. I do not remember who I got it from, but I assume they're all reputable co companies can make the same product. Uh, it's and I'm by by the search and the research I did. Uh, it's a real popular item with woodworkers. Mm -hmm. Real popular item with woodworkers, as you'd expect. If you want to brand a mark on a piece of well, wood yeah everyone that does any uh handcrafted articles wants to to market to market or another did paul the wood turner tell you what company do you get your no <laughs> <laughs> no i've never seen paul the wood turner brand anything well but, maybe you uh, should you should tune him into it <laughs> <laughs> uh my friend Paul will watch these videos, and he said you're going to be completely disgusted that I associated him with me. <laughs> oh, he's going to be pleased that I mentioned him. <laughs> Marvin, don't do that again. I don't want anybody to think that you and I know each other. Uh, all right. What's his name Where's again? Paul. Paul. Paul, Paul I don't know if you're Turner. watching this, but Marvin was telling me about your flies that you tied. Oh, yes. And, uh, uh, the, the fly that Denny showed... Uh, Yesterday, or to Wednesday, I should say. Yeah. Uh, Paul the Woodturner also ties those flies. And his flies make mine look like the dog's oh. breakfast. Paul, uh, send me one of yours and I'll have it up <laughs> next, next, to, next to Marvin. Yes. <laughs> Paul's pretty good at tying those fancy flies. All right, folks. Larry, we finally got that. Larry thinks that we need to get Denny to strop your... Your blade. Yeah, that blade was sharp when I left home, but I have birded up somehow. Uh, ordinarily, it'll just cut through a piece of leather. But I'm You're trying to be careful with your project it. so you don't mess it up. Well, I am trying. Uh, all right. Now, we've got this all glued up. Now we need to sew it. And the first step in that process is to punch some holes in each one of those arms. So I'm going to take my dividers and set them at... Your handy stereo dividers? The uh, I'm going to set that at three quarters of an inch. There you go. Three quarters? Three quarters. Three sixteenths right. <laughs> of an inch. <laughs> I knew I had to call you on it before. Uh, that's that's the smallest three quarters I've seen. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And this is what we call denifying, denifying a measurement, right? Yeah. That look like three sixteenths. Exactly. Looks like three sixteenths like to me. Is. We'll make a mark down there. That's darn close enough to three sixteenths of an inch. And I'm only going to do one of these because once you've demonstrated how to punch holes in something, you've demonstrated it. This particular chisel is uh, five millimeter, right? That's the one we're gonna use. Is that a diamond point? And it is a diamond point. And uh, it also has been denified. In other words, it's polished. All right. right, yeah. It's polished. So, 
What did I do? Left my whacker in the bag. This will work. Hang that standard procedure, right? You hang the first leg off of your leather. Whack that baby. There we go. First prong, last hole. And then I need two more. And why do I need I two more? Because I've done this before. I am so pretty is that, sure. Is that to, that's about <laughs> right at the end of your cut. Yes. <coughs> if you went me. one hole further, what would that do? Nothing. Nothing. Wouldn't hurt a thing. Wouldn't hurt a thing. And it use a little more thread. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. You just have to make one more stitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. And as I said, that's the last one of these we'll do. Leave two hanging over there. All right. That's ready. Close enough to sew. So we're going to take this one, set it aside, bring that one over. Pretend like I've already done that. Man, I, you tell you, I can sew. Yes, all right. Uh, boy, a few things in the world more boring than watching somebody spend 72 minutes sewing. Now, you might ask yourself, how does that man know that it takes him 72 minutes? <laughs> Before I came here, I'm thinking, man, that, those people don't want to watch me do this. It takes me 12 minutes to sew one of those seams. 12 times 6, 72. Nobody wants to watch you do anything for 72 minutes, Mara. So, what well, we've got... <laughs> we haven't talked about your past on camera before. There no, might be some things no. that I would watch you do for 72 minutes. Well, that might, be, that might be entertaining. You're right. <laughs> okay. Uh, we well, aren't going to go there. That. No, we are. Okay. Once you, once you get someone on there, then I'll ask you. You can do that. I'll lead the conversation. You can lead the conversation. Was there? Ah, there they are. Let's see. Michael says the person is... Use, I'm not sure what he's saying. Saddle stitch way, could one diamond all the holes with the saddle stitch for sewing the wings sure. together. Yes. You could sure. saddle stitch it, yes. or you could baseball stitch it. Or uh, this stitch that I'm going to put in here was one that I figured out. That doesn't mean it's my stitch or I originated it. It just meant I was trying to figure out how to sew this together. And tried four different methods, and the fifth one worked. That's all that means. Okay? What I'm trying to do is, <clears throat> let's see here, come on. I want just simple crosses. All right? Just these cross each other. Yeah, on the back, right, on, on the, the outside. Back, that on looks the outside. Just like a regular cross stitch. But on the inside, let's see if I can get this. Can you see how this. Mm -hmm. These, the thread almost covers the joint completely. It looks like a braid. Almost. Thank you. That's the word I was trying to think of. It almost looks like a braid that I've used to close the inside. Is that necessary? No. Can you use whatever stitch you love? Yes. It's your bowl. That's actually called a gaucho weave. Gaucho weave. There you go. I didn't I, I'm, know that. I'm glad you got. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to keep your plastic off your yeah and solder that, iron. Yeah, it's <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you not putting I'm this over all here up in I'm, flames. I'm over here watching you. All right, to sew this together, and and you can see that I've pre-punched these holes to sew this together. This bowl, the colors for this bowl were not chosen haphazard. I chose turquoise because it happens to be my granddaughter Jaisley's favorite color. So I chose turquoise and then I thought to myself, what do I want to go with turquoise? Well, turquoise, southwest, sandstone, 
Close enough. Beautiful. Okay? Beautiful. I thought that combination would look good. So there was some actual thought put into that. But now that I've decided I want turquoise, I need some turquoise thread. Well, we talked about a little bit. You had tried the rhino, but it wasn't quite right. thick enough. This is heavy thread that I use to, to make that gaucho braid so it covers that seam. I need some heavy thread, and I need turquoise. Now, I'm telling you, Springfield Leather has a crazy inventory of thread. I, I don't, I, I wouldn't have that much thread. Everybody's got their favorite size and their favorite color. And when you start multiplying sizes times color, you get into a crazy inventory of thread. You'll have 288 different threads you can pick from. And some fool will say, you don't have turquoise. <laughs> okay. So what do you do? There are There is a place in Maine, the state of Maine, called the Maine Thread Company. Imagine that. Yes, imagine that. And the Maine Thread Company makes thread for hand stitching. I don't think they even make machine thread. No, I don't it's believe just, so. Just We've looked hand, at it. hand stitching thread. If you ask the nice folks at the main thread company, they will send you one of these sample cards. So give me, ah, there you go. And that card will show you six different sizes of thread. And as you can see, from very thin to way fat. I'm going to use this one right here, second from the end. They call it 0 0.045 inches. And then they show you all the different colors they have, and bingo, there was turquoise. They will sell you a single spool. I think that's a four ounce spool. I didn't wait. Uh, so you can you don't have to buy a lot, uh, but that is one source of hand stitching thread if you can't find the weight or the color you're looking for. Uh, I'm going to use... Is that a nylon thread? This is... Or a poly? I think it's poly. I believe it's poly. Let me see if this says... Uh, waxed polyester cord, as a matter of fact. Melts like nylon, but it's not. Polyester. And we could get into discussion of threads, but that's for another video. Okay. <laughs> All right. We need about... Let's see. Ah, come on now. Hang on to the end of that. We need that much. Okay. That'll do. And we need a couple of harness needles. I leave the thread from the last job on here so I can find my needles next time. All right. And as I said, this... Instructions for making this particular stitch are online somewhere. Okay, and we're going to prepare the thread just as you would for any saddle stitch. I flatten the end of the thread. My thumbnail goes to the eye of the needle better. Come down. Stick it through. You've seen Denny do that before. Pull it down, and she's locked. Standard procedure for doing any kind of hand stitch, saddle stitch anyway. I don't think I've ever done any other kind of stitching. But, uh, oh, come on now. Ah, there we go. Just needed you to talk to me. I just need me to talk nice to it. And by the way, over the last couple of days that I've been here, these people have heard me say more than time, come on, sweetheart, get in there, right? Come on, sweetheart is not what I say at home. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to take this. And Denny, let me borrow his uh, stitching awl that has a diamond profile. Okay? Diamond-shaped sh stitching awl. I'm all 
four, four. I'm going to go through here and enlarge these holes. And you'll see why here in a moment. Why I did that. It's a good idea to enlarge those holes. We're going to go through each hole twice. And we're going to go through the first couple of holes three times. You, you need a big old hole to go through three times with that fat thread. So just take a second here to enlarge those holes. What size needle are you using? Looks like a double lot. Or is it not? Or a triple lot? Well, a CS uh, Osborne one, harness needle, says gauge 17. Whatever that means. <laughs> Take a look at it, Denny. You can tell us. That's probably the triple lot, the big, the large I would, size. I would agree with that. Yeah. Well, the number on it's from from where you got them has two zeros at the so end. So that'd be double lot. That's double lot. Double lot. Yeah. yeah. We sell them in three sizes: small, single, medium, double. and large. <laughs> yeah. And that would be single lot, double lot, and triple lot. Okay. Yeah. All right. We've got those holes enlarged. Before I start to sew, I'm going to show you this. The yellow rocks that are inside that jar. Rosin? Yes, it is rosin. You, you ever rosin use rosin? I'm a yeah, you, oh, you're an umpire. Of course you know about <laughs> rosin. This is ordinary... ordinary Lump, whoop, rosin. Eh? Just like pitchers use in baseball and stringed instrument musicians use on their bows. I keep it in this jar because all I want is a little rosin dust. And so if I shake this up, whew, rosin dust comes out. I can just rub it off, put that on my fingers, and now I have. Sticky fingers. If you find that when you're saddle stitching, doing any kind of sewing, and you keep losing the needle, it keeps pulling out, a little rosin fix well, you right up. I've never used rosin, but I have used beeswax. Beeswax, beeswax. will do that also. And this is it, this is like the, pow the powder type rosin. This is what right. they would use to crush up and make the powder bags that they right. use in baseball. Right. As opposed to the rock rosin that they use on their bats with pine tar. Um, Sorry. The, no, I got it right here. <clears throat> and so the the powder rosin doesn't is not supposed to transfer off of your fingers. It's supposed to stay on your fingers. Right. So you're not gonna right. you're not gonna booger up your threads. No. Uh, this is a cake of violin. What do they call this? Natural light rosin for violin, viola, and cello. Right. You can buy bulk rosin. Mm -hmm. That little jar there will last you and everybody in your neighborhood their whole life. <laughs> or you can just buy, I think this was four bucks for this little stick of rosin. And to use it, you can just take a knife, scissors or anything you want, scrape it up, get some dust off of it, and you're in business. You don't have to buy a whole pound of bulk rosin to fix you up. It gets your fingers sticky after you sew half a dozen stitches. The beeswax from the thread will keep your fingers sticky and you don't have to worry about it. But if you find that they're slipping, rosin might well, be your friend. I'm going to have to get me some rosin. I always it, have a cake of beeswax there on my bench when I'm stitching. And it's, it's, I use it also on uh, braiding needles. Right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's the same thing. It just yeah. makes them a little bit easier to grip. Well, your hands uh, don't get so sore. You aren't working so right. hard. You aren't yeah. gripping so hard. Yeah. Okay. We're going to start on the inside. And just pull those through. <laughs> Darcy yeah. says Johnny uses it to rosin up his bow when the devil went down to Georgia. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. We'll even those up. And then we'll go right back through the same hole. 
from the outside to the inside. And I'm going to do this such that even up these threads and I'm going to make this so that those first two stitches are come on, Martin, parallel, not crossed. Just for appearance sake, right? Just make them parallel. And then I'm going to tighten that first stitch up. Now, from the inside, I'm going to go down one hole. I can find it. There it is. And it doesn't matter whether you go left over right or right over left, as long as you're consistent. Do it the same way. Just every do time. it the same way every time, and your stitches are going to look pretty. So now I've got this coming out the second hole. I'm going to go back up <laughs> to that first hole for the third That's stitch the third round through there, through third hole. round through that hole. But that's the only one that's going to get three rounds. And then, come on, sweetheart. All right. Get mean with it here. Get my pliers out. We also have a little rubber disc that. that you cut out of like an inner tube. Oh, so yeah. You can grip a hole and pull right. your needle for Right. Is that a pitiful pair of pliers? Aren't those, aren't, those pair of aren't those cute? Aren't those cute? All right. Okay. He tried to make right. you feel better by saying they were cute instead of pitiful. <laughs> when you <laughs> when you get back to the inside, cinch that up, pull it tight. Then, and I think you can see this. See how mm -hmm. they're not; those edges aren't even. This one's higher than its neighbor. Just slide that up there until they're even. You can do that little slide maneuver for the first two, maybe three stitches, and, and then it's, it's impossible to move. Where it is is where it's going to stay it's, after that. So I'm going to go again, drop down a hole from the inside. If I can find it, where did you go? As much poking and jabbing as I did in there, it's still hard to see that hole. Now we're just crossing. And we're just crossing it over on the inside and crossing it over on the outside. So I went down a hole on the inside. I'm going to come up a hole from the outside. Because you need to make your Put X. Put that through and I've got my X. I'm going to let this down and I am going to pull on that. You can correct me. But I'll bet they're not going to pull that thread through three sixteenths of an inch of leather. No. <laughs> well, it, yeah, with with the accurate measurement that you gave on your stitch border, <laughs> you were good. They, they won't pull no, that. They won't pull if that. If you get much closer than that, there's a chance it might. they'll pull it. Through. It might. And I can promise you, you aren't going to break that thread. Yeah. That, oh, no. Enough. You can tell your truck with that yeah, stuff. You're not going to break your thread. So you just do that all the way down. Is there all, anything special all, to ending it? Yes. Okay. And let me just do a couple more. Here. All right. Can you stitch and can you stitch and talk at the same time? Can I? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I mentioned we were going to talk about this of your your past. Oh no! We the man talked, wants to talk about my past. We talked about well. it in here and. <laughs> <laughs> the adventures that you went on as a young Marvin. Yeah, well, uh, what did you let's do? See. What did you let, do? Let, in me, the let Army? me let me see if I can do right. this. Uh, we're not make it too long a story here. Uh -oh. I'm sewing this up. Don't forget to snug that up. This leather is thick and it doesn't want to go together to make a nice joint. So you need to pull that tight. Okay. In in my life, I have. Uh, had two careers. The second career that I had was uh, the one that brought me to Wyoming. I didn't let that stitch cross right. Ah, okay. And that career was, I was the radiation safety officer. Is that something you impressed? Yeah, Does that sound very impressive? Much so, yeah. <laughs> radiation safety officer in a uranium mine. 
The officer and part's what gets they, Oh yeah, well, see, <laughs> and I didn't that I didn't dream up that title. It was already there. Somebody else, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, I think, said you have to have a radiation safety officer. Mm, okay, so we'll hire this guy. But the one that Tony's referring to was before I moved to Wyoming and uh, went to work at that uranium mine, I was in the Army. I, I uh, joined the Army right out of college in 1969. Some of you are old enough to remember what was happening in 1969. And I obviously can't sew. You asked me if I could sew and talk at the same time, Tony? Well, I tried. Obviously not. Let me hang on a second. Let me see what I've got going here. Um, I can't either. That's why I asked first. <laughs> wow. How did I get that thing way up there in the wrong hole? Let me see here. Okay. No, that one's right. It's the one underneath. I need another... Hang on, folks. See if I can do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, eight. Ah, okay. That's even. That one goes up there. Okay. Sorry, I'll take the blame on that. No, one. that's all right. That's all right. All right. Uh, I joined the Army. 1969. In 1969. And got the best job. Now, for those of you who think you got a pretty good job, right? you enjoy your work. How does he classify the best job in the world? I was for 11 years in the Army, United States Army Explosive Ordnance Disposal. You can look that up or I'll just tell you. Did you ever see the movie? Uh, the Hurt Locker. Oh, Hurt Locker. The yeah. Hurt Locker. Yeah. Remember that guy with the big old bulky suit on walking down the street in Iraq? Anyway, that's the bomb squad. That's what I did. And why, you might ask, an ordinary person would, is that the best job in the world? And the answer is, they let you blow stuff up. <laughs> what is more fun than blowing stuff up? Blowing more stuff up. Nothing. <laughs> they... The government paid me out of your taxes and your taxes and <laughs> well, your taxes to, yet, so. <laughs> to blow stuff up. It was a great job. Yeah, every once in a while, you had to do something scary, and there's a pucker factor, I guess you call it in that. But, <laughs> but it, it was, yeah, every once in a while, they, they gave us hazardous duty pay. Yeah, I extra, imagine so. <laughs> extra pay for blowing stuff up. I mean... It, it was, I couldn't. Uh, uh, so so did you have to actually disarm bombs? Yes, I disarmed bombs. Take them somewhere out in the desert? No, well, that was, that, was, that was the preferable procedure. <laughs> uh, just take them out and blow them up. But uh, first thing you had to do is pick them up. And that gets kind of, you know, tightens you up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> tightens you up. Pick, pick, pick the thing up and put it in the Jeep. And there's a a sergeant with you, and he doesn't want to hold it in his lap, right? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, no, but every once in a while, you had to do just like in the movies: get you a pair of diagonal cutters, look at those wires, and say, "I think I'll cut the red one, one or the blue one." Right? <laughs> now that part's phony, man. It don't matter what color the wires, just cut one and get on with your life. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, was that the deal? That was the deal. Yeah, oh, you don't know, matter the You had a 50 50 chance, cut right? Talk to no, you. cut the ribbon or the blue one. <laughs> MacGyver sitting there uh, wondering which wire to cut. And anybody out there that, has, that was EOD once upon a time will tell you this is the truth. Only. Uh, I'm going to phrase this diplomatically. Uh, only a fool would reach down with a pair of wire cutters and cut a wire. The Army supplied us with remote wire cutters. You hook this little device onto the wire and go back 300 yards, turn the handle, and it goes snip and cuts that really? wire. 
And if the bomb goes off, you're 300 yards away. You knew it was the wrong wire. <laughs> so, yeah, you got the wrong wire, partner. Uh, so it wasn't anything like the movies where you walk up with something. you, you got to be a fool. Nobody's going to walk up there and cut a wire. My goodness. Well, Those before guys, I heard this, I probably would have. So <laughs> you were just walking up and putting this, your little tool on. Well, you had to go up and, and first of all, open this thing. Mm -hmm. Right? You walk up and, and they give you a stethoscope. Oh, it's a fancy stethoscope, too, just like the one the nurse wears, right? Stick it in your ears, put it on the bomb. Right? Uh, all right, it's ticking. Time to get serious. Uh, uh, then you got to open it up. Right? Well, you can you can take your box cutter or your shears and you can open it up, but only fools do that. They have remote box openers. You can get back <laughs> 300 yards and tear that package open. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that that's no, don't no walk up there. <laughs> uh, that was in the movies. You ain't in the movies anymore, so, <laughs> partner. You're doing this for real. Why didn't they uh, get you a pair of remote stethoscopes? Uh, <laughs> just before I left, they had actually given us a fancy stethoscope, an electronic stethoscope, okay? is a pickup off of an acoustic mm -hmm. guitar. <laughs> 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 or a pickup that you put on an acoustic guitar or something like that. Anyway, uh, it was not very sophisticated. Wait, don't do that. But don't You're, you're over the top of your... Your lip. He just stretching his oh, hole you're right. stretching your hole. Okay. I'm stretching the hole. Thank you. No, Sorry, I'm, I was trying to keep track. I'm, I well, actually, mess it up. I'm not stretching it. I'm trying to find it in there. Oh, okay. In all of this fancy floral pattern here, I lose where the holes are. And my distraction. Uh, it, it, anyway, it, it was... Uh, so you, you tried to do that. Uh, I was in that 11 years. Uh, never lost a man. I, I, and then I got all my ears and fingers and things, too. Uh, things. Uh, anyway, uh, it, it was it was dangerous work, but man, first of all, you got to blow stuff up. Have I emphasized that enough? But but second of all, and, and, and anybody who does a dangerous job, firefighter, I'm mm -hmm. sure will tell you, you come back from a fire and there's an adrenaline rush that's worth mm -hmm. having. It really is. I mean, you know. Oh, I'm floating here. This is all right. This is natural rush. Uh, and there's something to be said for that. There's something to be said for that. Uh, and somebody's got to do it. And I just assume they paid me as paid you yeah. to do that. Uh, the uh, I was going to comment on the, on the hazardous duty pay. Uh, <laughs> do you ever wonder what you were worth? You know, somebody, what are you worth? We went through what that here one time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We've got Denny up to $4. Denny, That's what Denny's worth. Denny $4. knows $4. what he's worth. $4.86. You know, but what, what, what are you really worth? Where's, where's the cutoff there okay, right. for, for what I'm worth? Well, for a fact, I know exactly what I'm worth. The government told me I'm worth $110 a month. That's my value to the United States government, $110 a month. Than a lot of us. They, uh, yeah, well. <laughs> anyway, so folks, that that all that story to explain this little tidy little tool tray I've got here. I tried to convince you Wednesday that that was a good thing to do, and it is. But for a fact, get that tight. That's a residual from my years in the bomb squad. Nobody wants to be. Standing over a bomb that's ticking, go. Where are those pliers? I don't know if they're here somewhere. Right? Where did I drop you that got, screwdriver? You got to. <laughs> you got to be a little bit. Yeah, is it little, in there? <laughs> you got to be a little bit tidier than that. So that just stuck with me. Uh, so did I give you? Plus to tell that story. See, there. that's we made stitching that twelve minutes. Yeah, that, 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 that was. I bet you it was more highly entertaining than <laughs> you doing it at the house. That's that's my last stitch from the outside. And I go up from the outside and down from the inside. Okay. And when I get finished, I need one of your famous Springfield Leather Company 
Stitch thread burners. Thread burners. That's what I need. We got a thread burner over there. I'll cut these off. Okay. And just come in. Ooh, it's got a thread burner handle on it. And burn those threads. And I'm going to push them down, but unlike most people around here, I'm going to blow on it first and then push them down so I don't burn the end of my finger off. <laughs> I didn't see where you got that. Then is that good enough? All right. So that thing is stitched. We got two more steps and we can, we can demonstrate them here. Uh, we don't have to go through the whole procedure. We'll just do one wing. We'll do one wing and we'll take a little... Tell me what you want. I want that, okay. and I want some of that ha hazelnut. hazelnut. I think we're going to try some hazelnut. Yeah, we'll try some we're gonna hazelnut. We're going to do close to what finish. we did for the for the other bowl. Right. One difference. Okay. Is I am not going to bevel these edges. Okay. This is an angular bowl, and I leave those edges flat. You do whatever you think makes it, it look good. nice. I'm looking at it from but, from an angle over yeah, here, and yeah. it looks like they're actually. Scalloped. Scalloped. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. good. Yeah. So I I do not belt the edges on this. And we're not even going to use that little palette. You know, and we'll for them, just go for ahead. them to be scalloped like that, you remember we put an edge to edge and cut them off, and yours over there is just Straight. a scalp. Yeah. And we straightened them off. Yeah. You I don't know if that's up. an optical illusion or in the nature of the leather. I, I couldn't tell you. We can make but, something uh, up. But I'm just going to go ahead and use this stitch all in here to put a layer of that edge coat on there. Nice color. All right. That is. It's, 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 nice it's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah. And then we've got the same procedure that we used on Wednesday. Hey, Nick, will you go to three? If it... Uh, where's my scrap? If it drips down the side. Oh, where'd you go? Which? Here, you, you stay right where you're at and I'll, I'll move you. Yeah. All right, there you go. Okay, you see the dribbles on there? Okay. Remember that all you need to do is just take your finger, wipe that down. That is also one of the reasons that we use an edge coat that kind of close to the color yeah. of the leather. It's a little more forgiving. Uh, so we'll just do one of these legs here with an edge coat. And then we'll do that thin. We'll let that dry. The cleanup on this is a whole lot easier than the cleanup on the wheel. A little roller pen. <laughs> that, that's pretty involved right that's, there. <laughs> that's for sure. All right, Tony, I think I'm back. We'll stay right yeah. there just a second. We'll keep that bowl, and I'm going to show a close-up, closer-up of the... Of that stitch? Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can see the out... I'm going to show an outside of it. All right, hold that right there for a second. Uh, you, you stay where you're at. I'll come to you. Ah, there you are. All right. Yeah, braided on the inside and cross-stitch on the outside. Very nice. There we have it. There we have it. All right. The very last thing we're going to do is get us some, I don't want high gloss, some Angelus. Ah, there it is. Some Angelus 605. <clears throat> pardon me. Satin acrylic finish. Get one of our skinny shearling pads here. You'll just forgive me. I'm going to wipe that down so I don't make a giant mess out <laughs> of putting this finish on. Okay. I think everybody understands. How to, paint an edge. Edge, how to paint an edge by <laughs> now. If they haven't, they weren't paying any attention. Okay. Uh, so, we'll put a little bit of this 
on the inside and the outside. Which one do we say this was? Was this the 610 or the 610? 610 satin. 605. 605 satin. 605 satin. And you'll notice that I am putting it also on the threads. Just sealing those threads up. That'll help them. Michael had a question. If you, not, if you don't burn the ends of the thread um, and cut it flush of the work, will they work out over time on a bowl like this? If you... I think they would. Well, I'd be afraid If they you would. never touch the bowl, it probably won't No, work yeah, out. yeah. That's the answer. A lot of people will use a, a soldering iron to uh, mm -hmm. burn the threads. Right. It doesn't... You don't have to touch them that way, and it doesn't seem to make them dark. Like it doesn't does. discolor them yeah. like, like a flame does. Yeah. Uh, so, I have tested this. Uh, if you watched Wednesday, you remember the potato chips and Fritos that we put on a piece of leather to see <laughs> if it would absorb oil. Anyway, on this one, the, it did not. It was already had a good finish on it. But I'm going to add this anyway. We're going to finish the inside of that, and we'll use the same finish on the outside of that. And uh, again, I'm not avoiding the thread at all. Go ahead and put it on there. It, it, it'll soak in. Well, it'll soak in. It'll soak around those threads, and... It won't look like you. It it also kind of makes the up. color a little more vibrant. It does. It it really enhances the color. I think. Uh, yeah, that that's just another thing altogether now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it it has definitely brightened up that leather. All right, one more time around. Is this what we call a single coat? <laughs> are, you, are you applying that generously? I am. Uh, no, I'm just applying it often. Uh, well, there's a difference. Uh, so I'm not just laying it on thick to me. It's a smooth coat. To me, it's that's not, generous. Not leaving glob right. anywhere. I, I'm, just I, I just make sure it's smooth. Make out. sure it's smooth. And it'll level itself out and smooth it out if you don't get too much on there. And if you do get too much on there, you can take whatever... You got and wipe it off before it dries anyway, and then you can wipe the excess off and then we'll put another light coat on there and that's that. Would Aussie finish for this? That's Pretty much any way you would want to condition and keep it. What we're doing here is this acrylic finish is keeping other body it's keeping oils it clean. Or, or food right. oils it's keeping it clean. penetrating. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, boy, did I just set that upside down? Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny watched and just let you do it. I just. I thought there was a. There's a trick to that. To yeah, there's a method there. to my madness. No, it's buffoonery. <laughs> that's what you call <laughs> that. Right. That's that's exactly what you call that. All right, let's try it that way. Uh, <laughs> where were we before I did that? Uh, the finish. Oh. <clears throat> I did not oil this. You oil it if you want to. Oil it if you want to. Put some neat's foot oil on this outside, on, on yeah. this bridle. And actually, the uh, bridle really doesn't need any oil. I, I, it's it's uh, uh, tanned with some waxes and oils. Right. I, I figured that that, and, uh, that it was going to be just fine. I got a fingerprint on there. Okay. How are we doing for time? We're, we're way over. You're supposed to be over at noon? Yeah. Well, only 45 minutes over. Good. <laughs> well, You're doing well. Did you have fun? Marvin. I, Marvin, you you've me. been here, what, since Tuesday evening? You took uh, a tour? Wednesday evening. No, uh, Tuesday evening. Tuesday You're evening. right. Tuesday evening. Hung out with uh, us. Had, and, a good, and, had a good time. I did. We got three bowls out of you. And this is, uh, the, the, the frightening part about this is I'm sober. This is what I, <laughs> this is what I look like. <laughs> when I'm sober. Uh, so thank you all very much for your forbearance, for putting up with me talking forever.
Martin, uh, we enjoyed having you. Believe you. it or not, thank even you. Even though I we don't act a, like it. Good, no, yes, yeah, <laughs> y'all have been really good to me. I yeah, appreciate it. We appreciate you sending sending an email to me. If if you guys don't know, we didn't really talk about the story. I'll no. come over here. Marvin Marvin sent me an uh, email and said, "Hey, I've got these bowls that I make. Would you be interested in me paying my way here?" And I said, how far is from here? <laughs> and he said, Wyoming. And I said, did you say pay your own way here? Said, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to come visit Springfield Leather. Sure. I got a travel partner that will talk me through. If yeah. Or at least she'll listen to me while I talk. <laughs> that's the way. That's what my significant yeah. other does. She yeah. listens to me while I talk. <laughs> and I said, come on down. We'll have fun for a while. And it, it and worked we did. out. And we, we did. had a good time. It worked out. I, I, uh, I had no idea how long it was going to take to do these procedures. And obviously, I underestimated how long it was going to take. Well, we got. If you skip to this part in the video, go back. There's some great stories in there. Some great, (laughs) some great tips and techniques Uh, that even Darcy said. You know, she's been at Springfield Leather over 20 years, and the parchment paper trick for her. She's like, "How did I not know this?" (laughs) Actually, why don't you stay over till next Wednesday, and we'll do it again. We'll do it. (laughs) We'll do it right next Wednesday. (laughs) Get it right. We can continue. Well, now, uh, I only have half the votes on that. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? I only... Yeah. The major voter is probably major voting. Major voter right. Probably going probably back ready to the to house. go home. Yeah. yeah. Well, we appreciate her letting you come and Well, thank you. Us. I appreciate her, too. <laughs> so I'm over there waving. <laughs> She's got a little wave, and there's been thank yous. And I tell you what, after Wednesday evening, I went and looked, and uh, Thursday morning I woke up, and there was... a 1,100 views that were on Holy there. Right? Holy So people are watching you That's, and uh, enjoying you, and they, they have enjoyed it. We'll touch base with you again and, and hang out, see what else you can come up with, and maybe we'll have some more live shoppings with uh, the bar, uh, the Marvin Bowl. Oh, bags. yeah, yeah, yeah. Coax that people into trying well. something new, yeah. Sure. Any, any sure. last words of advice you got for people? No, just this. If, if this is supposed to be fun, folks, if it's bothering you, try a different method. That's it. It's just there's uh, dozens of ways to do the same thing we just did. And uh, this is supposed to be fun. That's Was it, it worth your trip to come out oh, here? Oh, yes, indeed. I've enjoyed myself immensely, Tony. Oh, yeah. you what? Yeah. I'm going to go out and try and blow something up. But <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you need something to do this weekend and you need help on blowing things up, we showed Marvin's contact information. Shoot him a message, say, how how am I going to blow this up? <laughs> what? Put some explosives in, in your bowl, and blow it up, and try again. <laughs> try it again. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll yeah. see you. See you. Bye. My good job, God, Marvin. It's a quarter to one.